Jessie here. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. It is time. We are starting September out with a bang with my first paycheck budget in my September budget worksheets. Technically, this paycheck is arriving in August, and honestly, most of this week is set in August, but the 1st of September does fall during this pay period, and that's when a lot of my bills come out. Um, so I just wanted to kind of be prepared for that. So we're gonna go ahead and start September right now with the first paycheck budget of the month. But before we do that, I wanna take you guys through a little flip through of my September budget worksheets that I printed for myself. You probably already saw this pattern. I shared it in a previous video. This is my pattern for September. I'm calling it Moody Floral. It's beautiful. I love it. I think it's so gorgeous. I made some changes for my own personal budget. And that's what I wanna show you today. You guys have already seen this. This is my dated calendar. I'm gonna use this to keep track of all of my bills and whatnot. Nothing here has changed, but you can get a little glimpse of what the worksheets look like. If you would like to get your hands on these worksheets for your September budget, you can do so by either buying them from Etsy, which is linked down below. They are printable worksheets. Download them, print them yourself at home. Nothing will be mailed to you. They are eight and a half by 11 size. Um, I don't know if you can shrink them down. You can try. No promises, it'll work. Um, I only create them in eight and a half by 11. That's what I use. I don't have time to make them in different sizes. I do apologize for that. I've gotten requests for that, but, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. I have been filming and talking nonstop for hours. So this is the last video in my little filming roundup. So hopefully I can get through it. Uh, the other way you can get your hands on my worksheets is by joining my channel membership. If you join at the budget buddy tier, um, you get access to members only content, early access to all of my videos, and you get access to a paycheck budget worksheet as well as um, the two page hybrid budget worksheet, which I have here, I can show you. Here's the two page hybrid budget worksheet. It is a full monthly budget as well as weekly check-ins, place to keep track of your sinking funds, any savings, your debt payments. I used this method of budgeting for years. You can see lots of videos on my channel featuring this hybrid budget if you're interested in knowing how to use it. Um, as a budget buddy, you also get access to the paycheck budget, which looks like this, okay? Or you can join at the budget bestie tier and get access to all of these worksheets, every single one. It's a total of 17 worksheets. Um, in my undated bundle, plus four in my dated bundle. So lots and lots of worksheets. That's the top tier. And it's less expensive to join my channel membership to get the worksheets than it is to buy them on Etsy. But you do have to commit to a monthly fee. So, you know, buyer's choice. All right, let me show you the change I made. I changed up the paycheck budget. Now, I did not make changes to the paycheck budget that's available in my bundles. That budget, paycheck budget, still looks like this with the checking section, the cash envelope section, sinking funds, extra debt, and savings down at the bottom with a total section, okay? But for me, my personal budget, I changed some of these categories. Now I have fixed expenses and I have variable expenses. Sinking funds, extra debt, totals, savings, that's all the same. I just changed the title on these two worksheets. I am not opposed to making these changes to the bundles moving forward. I just made these changes after I had already completed and uploaded the bundles for everyone else. So you guys can leave me some comments and feedback below if you like this version better, or if you like this version better, or if you'd like access to both. I'm open-minded, I can do whatever, but for me, I did change these headings to be fixed and variable since that is how I budget now. Before, this was checking and this was cash envelopes and I just don't budget that way anymore. I don't use cash envelopes, so it didn't really make sense to do it that way. 
All right, since we are here on this paycheck budget worksheet, let me go ahead and start writing the paycheck budget, which is why you are here. I need to look at the calendar so I can get the dates. So you can see that the first paycheck of September doesn't happen until the third. But I have a lot of bills that come out on the first and the second of the month. So I decided to use the last paycheck of August as my first September paycheck budget. I hope that that makes sense. It sounds more confusing than it is, I think. Um, but I need to go back and look at my August calendar to figure out what the date of that paycheck is because I don't know right off the top of my head. August 27th through September 2nd. Okay, so that is the dates for this paycheck budget. And my camera battery is flashing. This is the third camera battery I have gone through today. Let me switch out and I'll be right back. Okay, so I switched out my camera battery. I got myself a drink, so hopefully we can make it through this video. I have been filming for five hours straight. So I'm tired, but I'm gonna keep pressing on. I still have editing to do after this. It's been a very busy, but very productive YouTube day. All right, so for the first paycheck budget of September, it's gonna look very similar to my August paycheck budget that I were, was doing, except that at the end of September, I discovered that I could use a little bit more money towards my bills. Not that I was not able to pay all of my August bills with the money I set aside, I was, but I would like a little bit more of a buffer there. So I'm gonna raise the amount that I'm setting aside each week for next month's bills. You guys know by now, if you've been watching my videos, I'm a month ahead now. That feels really great. I'm super excited about it, but I'm gonna beef it up just a little bit more. So the amount that I am budgeting this week is 1500. That's what I've been doing um, for the past couple of weeks. It's been working out really well, so I'm gonna stick with it. This is not my income amount. This is just the amount of my income that I have set aside for this paycheck budget to budget for the following things. Under this fixed expenses category, we have October's bills. So all throughout August, we were say, setting money aside for bills in September. We are gonna be paying all of our bills throughout September with the money we earned in August. Now that September is here, we're gonna start saving for October bills. And the amount that I'm going to budget is $750. So just a little bit more than I was budgeting week to week in August, just so we can build up a little bit of a buffer. Maybe a bill will come in a little bit higher and I'll have a little bit of money to set aside for that. So that's what we're gonna do there. And that's it for fixed expenses. Just paying our bills, Everything else is kind of variable or it's savings. So $750 going towards next month's bills. Now let's talk about our variable expenses. All right, let's get serious. In grocery, I did a little recap with my channel members of my August spending and I compared my August spending to my July spending just to get a feel for how well I did in comparison, right? You guys, I spent so much less money on groceries doing paycheck budgeting than I did doing hybrid budgeting. Like $300 less, which was incredible. So obviously looking at my grocery budget just seven days at a time is the way to go. And I'm so glad I'm continuing with paycheck budgeting. That being said, there were a couple of weeks last month that I was over my grocery budget. And so I'm gonna raise my grocery budget back up to $300 a week, which is a lot of money. I understand it's a lot of money to spend on groceries. We're in a stage of life right now where we need lots of convenience items. We need lots of snacks. Um, 
this is the last full week of summer vacation for Austin. They'll be going back to school starting next week. And Michigan has given free breakfast and free lunch to every single student, regardless of income. So I'm hopeful that my grocery budget's gonna be able to go down moving forward because I won't have to feed him breakfast and lunch here at home. He is still in soccer. So he's doing a lot of Gatorade, a lot of protein filled snacks. We're doing a lot of super convenient meals at home slash eating out. So it's still gonna be pretty pricey. I don't expect our budget to really calm down, honestly, until like the first of next year. But I'm hoping that the groceries won't have to be up at $300 moving forward. This week, I'm definitely doing it because we're also going camping. So I'm not gonna run the risk of not having enough money set aside in groceries. So I'm gonna budget 300 and try to really hard to stick to that. Now let's talk eating out. Um, eating out is another one of those where I spend a lot, usually somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 to $150 a week. So I'm gonna keep it at $150. Do I hope that I will spend less than that? Yes, but I know our reality. I know what we're dealing with and I know how we are. So I'm just gonna keep on budgeting things a little bit higher, maybe higher than you would. Personal finance is personal. Do what works best for you and your family and your situation. That's what we're sticking with. Spending though, week after week last month, I set my spending budget way high and came in way under it. So we're gonna cut it way back and we're gonna budget $50 for spending. That should be more than enough to cover anything we need for going to soccer games. Sometimes we pay for tickets with the spending money. Sometimes we do it out of our sinking funds. It just depends. I want the money there just in case we need it. $50 should be more than enough. So that's gonna give me a total in variable spending of $500. So it's pretty much the same amounts that I've been budgeting for variable expenses week after week, just kind of skewing the numbers a little bit, a little bit higher in groceries and eating out, a little bit less in spending, $500 total. Let's talk about sinking funds. You guys know I've been using my savings challenges to fund my sinking funds. The end of the month came, it was time for me to true everything up. I didn't finish nearly as many savings challenges in August as I kind of expected that I would because I had spread my money out so much. I had way too many savings challenges going at once. I didn't get a chance to finish as many as I would like. Um, so I've been cutting back on the number of savings challenges I'm doing in order to fund my sinking funds a little bit better, but the amount is not going to change, at least not for this week. Maybe subsequent weeks, I may up it or lower it depending on the week. For now, for my short-term savings, I'm going to budget $200, just like with the previous weeks. If I have money left over at the end of the week, I will put extra money into savings challenges, but I'm not going to budget for that. So I have this $500 down here in variable spending. If I spend less than that, I come in under budget in groceries or eating out or whatever, then I can put some of that extra money into my short term savings but I'm not gonna budget for that because I never want to um, expect that I'm gonna spend less than what I budget. If I do, great, but I'm not gonna count on it. So we're just gonna stick with $200. That extra line item there essentially is just a place for me to put an actual number in case I come in under budget. Every single week last week, I managed to come up with something extra to put to our short-term savings. So that's great, I'm spending less and I'm thrilled with that. All right, let's talk about this extra debt section. Um, I still don't have any extra debt, woohoo! Credit cards are still all paid off, they're still sitting at zero balances. So don't need to use this category. I left it here, I didn't take it out of my worksheet because there may come a day when I use my credit card for something and I need to pay extra money towards debt. It's not today, thankfully, 
knock on wood, I'm still credit card debt free, but someday I may not be. I'm not opposed to using credit cards. I just wanna be mindful about it. I don't wanna get in over my head with the credit card debt like I have been before. So we're crossing that off. Nothing extra needs to go to debt today. Maybe someday, but not today. So I feel really good about that. All right, let's talk about these totals now. For income, I budgeted 1,500. For fixed expenses, I did 750. For variable expenses, 500. For sinking funds, 200. And nothing to extra debt. So let's do the math and let's see where this falls. So 1,500 minus 750 minus 500 minus 200. That leaves us with $50 for a buffer. So right now, this money will just sit in my account, act as a buffer, just in case we get to the point where we spend a little bit more. Maybe I go over budget in all of my variable categories and I need a little bit of extra money to make the budget work. That's where this $50 will come in. If I don't need it, I won't touch it. And it'll sit in the account, and then at the end of the month, anything I have left in this account will go into my savings account where I keep my long-term savings. So I have short-term savings, which I do up here in the form of sinking funds, and then I have long-term savings as well. $50 may or may not go into long-term savings. For now, it's just gonna act as a little bit of a cushion in my account. All right, my friends, that is it for this paycheck budget. We are starting out September strong, kind of wrapping up August, starting out September. Hopefully it'll be a really, really great month. Um, let me know what you are most looking forward to in September. For me, I'm hopeful that we will have some cooler temperatures because it is hot, hot, hot here in Southeast Michigan and I'm ready for fall weather. We may not see it in September, we'll see. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.